Commissioner Conant? Present. Commissioner Ziegenmeyer? Here. Commissioner Boomgarden? Here. Commissioner Wooten? Here. Commissioner Munger? Here. Commissioner Cochran? Here. Commissioner Elphick? Here. Commissioner Baines? Commissioner Chabdelaine? Commissioner Cardoza? Okay, I have quorum. Uh, Don, would you lay this in the flag slip, please? Yeah. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, public comment. Members of the public are invited to address the commission on any matters interest to the public that are not on the agenda for the period of time not exceed five minutes. Pursuant to the Brown Act, the commission cannot take any action on any item not listed on the posted agenda, but at a future agenda may be brought before and up to the public comment to, for appropriate action at the future meeting. Okay. Motion for the agenda. We have a motion to approve the second agenda. Oh, I forgot to do that one. <laughs> okay. Any public comment? Seeing none. Moving on. Nothing online, right? Okay. All right. Approval of minutes. Item number three. Vote on the agenda? Oh, you're right. Sorry. Okay. Um, all in favor of. A motion and a second on the agenda. Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Item number three approval of the minutes for March 9th, LAFCO meeting. Move for approval. Second. Munger and we have a motion and a second. Need it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign. Most pass unanimously. Okay. Uh, now we have the consent agenda. Uh, payment of claims. Motion. Second. And motion by Cochran and Ziegemeyer. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed, same sign. No negative. Opposed to pass unanimously. Public hearing, item number five. Uh, sphere of influence and amendment to include 5,833 acres, more or less than the sapphire of sphere of influence for Lever District 1. Um, a uh, receive executive officer report, recommended approval of an amendment to the sphere of influence for Lever District 1, item A. We're opening the public hearing. Is there anybody, would you guys like to, Drew, are you guys gonna address that? Who wants to? I'll start off. You'll start off, John? Start All right, off good. Um, well, I have a few talking points on this uh, re-annexation, I guess I should call it, because in the 90s there was an application yeah. that was approved and they failed to record it. So it never took effect and they had a sphere amendment at that time and it was reverted back to the old sphere, which we're amending again today. So that's what happened in a little history. So um, the the board of the levy district passed a resolution amending the sphere and the uh, uh, annexation area to include the 5,833 acres. And um, uh, as I mentioned, the spheres were updated in 2007 and, and so they brought it back or to, back to the original sphere um, and didn't um, honor the 1990s sphere. Um, the area is covered by a, um, a successful assessment district um, a formation by the Feather River West Levy Financing Authority. So they have the financing to do what they're doing. Um, and it cur currently provides services to the levy. So they're already providing the services out there. And uh, they're currently working with the uh, Central Valley Flood Protection Board and the state um, to take over the responsibilities for maintenance 
uh, of that um, service area. And the annexation um, will not to need to be modified for them to do that. So the recommendation is to approve the resolution uh, adopting, re, I guess, readopting the sphere of influence for the area to include the 5,800 acres and to adopt the resolution approving the um, an annexation of that southern benefit area in the same number of acres. And also to waive the conducting authority proceedings, the notice that went out to everyone, ask them if they don't have a written protest by the conclusion of the hearing that we would waive the conducting authority proceedings and um, we'd move on. Okay. Drew, did you guys wanna address this issue as well? Something we might've left off? <laughs> Hello, my name is Sean Menard. I'm with MHM Engineering. I'm the district engineer for Levy District 1, and I actually prepared the LAFCO application and the sphere of influence uh, modification. Um, we, we're calling this the southern benefit area of Levy District 1 because our levees, Levy District 1 levees, do protect this area. The levees break, the water flows to the southern end, so they receive a benefit. Um, as John mentioned, we are also looking at taking over maintenance area 3, but this is irrelevant of that process, it actually allows that to happen. But the main thing is to expand our benefit area, our, our boundary to match our benefit area. So wherever our water, wherever the levees break, the water goes, that's what we're trying to accomplish, accomplish by the sphere modification. And I guess that's your next item, the actual annexation. So, um, so that's the goal here. And this is the area, the maps we produce accomplish that goal. And Sabufka was the, uh, provided a lot of technical support the analysis where levee breaks, where the water goes, and that's what was the basis of this uh, footprint. So if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Cool. Any, any other questions? All right, thank you. Seeing none. Any other public comment? Seeing none, nobody online? Okay, um, so I guess we'll close the public hearing. Is there any members of the commission would like to address it? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to get, um, Maybe I'm behind the curve on this. Before this has happened, it's happening now, but before that, the finances came from the flood, Feather River flood. Right, they have a, a benefit assessment in place. Okay. But they, they, can't, they, can't, uh, they can't do anything until it's annexed. So yeah. you, you, can you explain that relationship? It's kind of a, a interesting. The current assessment that Levy District 1 has was accomplished through a 218 process done, was it 2010, or 2010, it's quite some time ago, and it includes only the benefit area of the current district boundaries. Um, what John's referring to is there was a JPA form that included Sutter County, LD9, and LD1. That benefit assessment was through the 218 process has been completed. It was approved by all the landowners. It hasn't been in, put in place yet. Um, there are some conditions or requirements that be met. Well, this is one of the items that we have to accomplish to get to that finish line. And um, so once that's done, then they'll put that on the tax roll and they'll have the, and they'll get rid of the two, I think there's two, right? Two current 218 assessments for LD1 will go away and the new JPA assessment will come in place to take over the finances. And the money will go to LD1, LD9, and um, eventually maintenance area three. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Thank you. It's hard to believe that it went on so long without being done. <laughs> okay, uh, so no other minute. public- This is the oldest levy district or oldest district yeah. in California from yep. 1866. Things have taken a long time, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah oldest district in California, LD1. That's why it's one. Okay, number one. All right. So um, the the uh, public hearing has been opened and closed. No other comments. I am looking for a motion to approve that. Make a motion that we uh, we approve the sphere of influence on the 5,833 acres, uh, Part A and Part B. Okay, we have a motion and a second by Munger and Ziegemeyer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. 
Motion passes unanimously. Now we still have to do number six. Maybe give a. I, did, I combined the two when I did the sphere and the. So so we were, are we done with it or do we need if to go back and do You approve the both now? resolutions. You're done with it. Yes. So we're done. Okay. Because I thought maybe we had to do back and do six as the actual. Two separate items, but we. Oh, then you need to uh, okay, do we another need. motion. motion to approve item number six, which is the annexation. I'll second that. Okay, so we have Ziegenmeyer and, and uh, Moten. Moten. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, Wait, same sign? Um, go ahead. Uh, for resolutions, it has to be a roll call. Vote. Even though we, we're going to do the no, and a, I mean, it'll probably pass unanimously, but we go ahead and do it. Okay, all right, we'll do a roll call. <laughs> on five and six? Is there a roll call on five and six? Yes. Okay. So call it twice, or it's included in the one roll call? Twice. Yeah, we can do both as a single roll call. Okay. Okay. All right. So just number six. And five. Five and six. Oh, well, yeah, but it's Five and six together. <laughs> one roll call. Commissioner Conant. Aye. Commissioner Ziegenmeyer. Yes. Commissioner Boomgarden. Yes. Commissioner Wooten. Yes. Commissioner Munger. Yes. Commissioner Cochran. Yes. Commissioner Elphick. Okay, that motion passed unanimously again. Okay, number seven, public hearing regarding the 23-24 uh, LAFCO final LAFCO budget. Public hearing, so we'll open the public hearing. Any um, comments from the public? Seeing none, closing public hearing, or back to the commission. Any comments from the commission? No, I'm making a motion to approve. Well, before you do that, before you do that, okay. there's some discussion about the LAFCO, Cal LAFCO conference in here. And I want to just bring that to your attention that there's, uh, i got to see these things, $9,000 allocated. That's enough to send plus training, so 11500 That's enough to send... Five commissioners. Is that is that what you're going to do? Is send five commissioners? You're going to send seven or eight? I want to. I, you know, I we want a budget if five, well. there is. I believe this year's. Uh, it's in Monterey this year. You're so correct. We're not looking at any clean flights. We're only looking at writing. Yeah. So that should be a cost savings in its own right there. But let me ask you this question, uh, Commissioner. Maybe a show of hands, or those are, would consider going. I'd consider two. I'm gonna, yeah, I, I'm so, so I don't think we're going to have more than three or four. And we don't so, have alternates here either, though, because it's a, it's a huge learning experience. Right. So I think I think what we have in the budget for that, John, is adequate because we're not going to. I don't think we're going to send more than four. If we're okay. That's oh. fine, and we have a contingency anyway. Okay. Um, so we're, uh, we have a motion by Ms. Egemeyer. Who is the second? I think we had a... No, no second yet on the budget? I think Mike, you made a motion, right? But we did. Larry seconded it. Okay. Motion and a second. So do we have to do a roll call on this one, too, because of the budget item? Yeah. Okay, so roll call. I'll save the trouble. Commissioner Conant? Aye. Commissioner Zingenmeyer? Yes. Commissioner Boomgarden? Aye. Commissioner Wooten? Yes. Commissioner Munger? Yes. Commissioner Cochran? Yes. Commissioner Elphick? Yes. Okay, number eight, authorization chair to sign letter of support of AB 1753 Cal LAFCO omnibus bill regarding elections, transmissions of property tax uh, sharing agreements. This uh, is an omnibus bill. It's a uh, non-controversial nature. Um, uh, Section 99 of the Revenue and Taxation Code requires tax sharing agreements. There's some language put into the actual Cortez Knox requiring the same. And the second part of this is the um, transmittal of uh, LAFCO certified documents. It currently says mail, and the word is in the the proposed legislation is to transmit. Okay. Because we're we're in an electronic world nowadays. <laughs> okay. So um, we have a motion for item number eight. Move to approve. Boom Gardner. 
Garden. Garden. All right. All right. <laughs> Let me do that. <laughs> I'm going to change your name yet. Yeah. I'll second. I wouldn't. All right. Thank you. A motion and a second. And this one, we can just do a roll a vote. vote. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion passed unanimously. Item number nine. John. We're just going too fast here. Yeah. Um, Get with it, John. Uh, okay, I, I will, but I've got a few things I've got to read. Uh, but um, the, uh, Terra Buena, I guess that's going to be coming before LAFCO. Um, there is a, there's a nomination period now for a county or district member to run for a seat on the Cal LAFCO Board of Directors. Uh, I know that Bill Connolly is going to run from Butte County, and he's the current president as far as the county member, but the special district, I don't know. Is that the one that Josh is... <coughs> from Nevada. Is he special? Is yeah. he going to run again? Yes. Oh, okay. So there's two incumbents that you'd have to go up against that have been there for quite a few years. Just for your information. Yeah. <laughs> Through the chair. So yeah. if someone were to, they'd run against Bill Conley, though. They'd have to run against Bill. Yeah, I think Bill's a, a big supporter of ours. So I think having yeah. Bill there would be more beneficial to us. Right. I think he's done a good job on the Sabuka board and, and seems to be a straight and narrow headed guy. Um, any other comments on this item? Seeing none. Okay, John, back to you. <laughs> uh, the report on the Cal AFCO annual staff workshop, they have an annual staff workshop every year. Uh, it's nuts and bolts items. It was a great presentation by C uh, on CEQA. Um, regarding a few things that I, I didn't know about posting uh, 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 notices of exemption and things like that on our website. And um, there was um, uh, uh, j just several other, uh, there was one on, um, what was, the, what was, that was on the transition planning. There was some uh, on that. Pardon me? Yeah, there was a, when yeah. Steve led on building the LAFCO team. The LAFCO team, and there was one on a mobile workshop, uh, I, which I, that was my project, going to an um, 1860s or 1870s flume in the, um, in the Cal Calaveras County up, uh, up to the old reservoir. They have a power system where they form this JPA between the city and the and a water, a local water district up there, and they get lots of money uh, for power. And at the same time, it's called clean power, and they also have a lot of uh, revenue. Um, they get a lot of revenue, get a lot of clean power, and it provides us a reliable water source for uh, uh, the habitat and for the city. So it, it, it's been a good deal, and this uh, JPA, it's called the Utica Water and Power Authority. And uh, that was really about, there was a, a chance for networking. I'm finding that I'm knowing less and less people at Cal AFCO. Uh, I think I mentioned about all of these recruitments for executive officers that are going on now. Um, and uh, uh, that's becoming more pro problematic because I'm about to add a few more to that list. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, it's, it's a little... It's a little different environment trying to find an employee nowadays. So, as you all know, uh, if you've had to hire anyone recently. <laughs> so, the last one is that I'm going to, I've opted to terminate my agreement. And I, it's a formality, but we need to, uh, and I have my termination letter, you notice, and I want to discuss some options for executive officer services in open session. And I'm going, I've got a memo. Okay. And, uh, I think that there are some options. Including the option of uh, using city and county staff or city staff, I should say. But there's some there's some caveats. So I will hand these out now. Or maybe it's just you to go to. Mm -hmm. them on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then here. What it is is I have a contract that has a 60-day uh, out on the contract. I'm exercising that option.
pension. Because last time I said I wasn't going to retire, and damn it, I am going to retire. <laughs> and I've decided that I need to, I need to do it because I'm not, I've become ineffective in my opinion, and I fired myself. So what we got is, um, is so the, the contract basically says is that I, I have a 60-day provision that goes until um, July 10th. Yes, sir. Because I'm using today as the date of notification. And um, during that period, we, we've got a little bit of work to do. And... Um, so everything will be returned to given to somebody, either council or, or whoever, whomever. Um, they have all the files, electronic and hard copies. I've done electronic files for the most part. For example, that annexation we just did. The only thing I have that's really hard copy are this going to be the signed resolutions because everything is electronic nowadays, mm -hmm. and that's that's good. And it takes less room. And then that delegates me as the executive officer, and that also is going to terminate. I will no longer be the executive officer. So I'll, that's the first part of this. And so, um, you know, it just had to happen. It's going to have it. Uh, actually, I resigned from another place this week also. So it's just divesting, I guess, to use a LAFCO term. Um, Anyway, the contract and a point, uh, I got the options paper here. I got, right now I've got um, four options, but I want to pay, I want you to, to notice this uh, salary survey that was done in the Bay Area and urban LAFCOs. LAFCO executive officers do not hesitate to jump from like Humboldt County to San Diego County or from a rural to an urban area if they get a little training. Just look at these salaries. I don't know what CAOs get, uh, Steve, but I don't know if that's in the ballpark. Maybe they need to be raised. I don't know. So anyway, um, that's, just what, that's just for your information. But let's talk about the other. There's a contract for appropriate city staff to staff the commission. That's a viable alternative method. Um, provided there's no conflict of interest or no employees holding incompatible offices. Because you're not only dealing with, well, it's conflict of interest, the FEPC could be on their back about um, an incompatible offices. And there's a lot of opinions out there. So I would recommend that, uh, that you hire a law firm with expertise in, um, in LAFCO that's independent of county council, city attorney, or or our council that can give you an opinion, give you the straight on, is there anything incompatible about this? I don't believe there is in the letter of the law, but there might be on this incompatible office thing. Um, and um, so there's a couple law firms around here that do business in Northern California's uh, Best Best and Krieger and Colin Tuno, Highsmith and Watley are two, two that I know of, and there's probably others out there. The commission should be mindful of existing war, uh, workloads of city employees because city employees are, uh, are, are pretty busy. Um, a conflict officer will need to be appointed in the event there is a work conflict between LAFCO and the, and the city. The, and I'm using the city. It could be any agency, whoever. If you appoint someone from the levy district, it could be uh, this, the same. So that needs to be, um, that is not uncommon to have a conflict executive officer in places. You don't need one with me because I don't live here and I don't have, uh, I don't have uh, investments in, specific investments in this county. Um, um, there are several consultants and staff from other LAFCOs that can perform this type of work. So you can hire a consultant, you can say, okay, Nevada LAFCO, we want a contract with you f to do provide this service. Uh, the commission may wish to contract with the current LAFCO clerk or use city staff for uh, the clerking function. It, it doesn't matter because along with my contract, pay, when it goes, page goes. So that's something you might want to think about. Um, and uh, that could be accomplished with using the other options I'm about to speak about uh, in a minute. The option... Um, this option can be implemented in the uh, least amount of time. 
uh, there's no trans. I know that in, in this case, there's no transition uh, timing that's going to even be needed because I it was mentioned to me, oh, we'll help, help have you go through the transition. Well, there's the transition is not very difficult with the person that you were um, thinking of hiring, um, or of a couple of you were thinking of hiring. And since there's um, um, uh, difficulty in securing executive officer services, the commission may wish to use city services as only as an interim solution. And that, that's not uncommon. I've been hired by several county administrators over the years who took over the function of LAFCO in their office because they were they were the interim because the former executive officer had left. Another is to hire an independent contract contractor, go out for a um, an RFP, which you've seen in the rest of this executive officer's report. There's three out on the street right now, and um, and we're uh, I'm following those to see actually if they get people that are um, knowledgeable in LAFCO to do that. You got to also be mindful of the constraints that the IRS might put on you when you hire an independent contractor because the IRS rules, the pretty general rule they have is you can't, if they're only serving one master, they got to be an employee. So you might have to have an employee, but if you have somebody that does several laugh goes, they, they can um, uh, avoid that, that rule. Just just a, is something to be aware of because I'd hate for you to end up having to pay back a bunch of money to the IRS. Um, and a point, another is, which is kind of one I kind of like, is appoint a member of the community to serve as executive officer. We've got a lot of ex-city councilmen out there or ex-boards of supervisors that understand this stuff, and they can be trained up easy enough because they understand most of it already. Uh, and that's been done, in fact, in El Dorado County, they have an ex-county supervisor that's their executive officer now. And depending on the IRS issues, that person may need to be an employee. So you've got to be real mindful of, of that. Uh, and last, the other option, I, and I can only think of four, and I probably, if I had more time, I could probably think of a few others. Uh, but anyway, this option is not as common, but a contract with another LAFCO. Monterey LAFCO is doing San Benito LAFCO's work right now. San Benito County is looking for a, or LAFCO is looking for an executive officer. So that is an option uh, to do that with contracting with you know, Sacramento LAFCO, for example, or Yolo LAFCO. And so um, just be mindful also of the little or no budget savings with any of these options. If you're going to do this to... Uh, save money, you're fooling yourself because you're not, you're not going to save money. Um, it's more um, getting it uh, done. Um, so um, staffing of LAFCOs has become very, uh, um, very expensive. Um, uh, the decision, uh, this decision is totally up to the uh, commission, I don't want to be involved in making a recommendation one way or the other. It's your decision entirely. But you just need to be mindful of these things when you uh, weigh the, the um, uh, differences. Uh, and some of these, uh, I, um, I can just start to explain some of the nuances that could occur with a history of doing this for 20-something years. Um, uh, the salary and ex executive officers commission, it's a free country. If you hire someone and they see these salaries, does Yuba City pay somebody 175 a year? Probably not. So, um, y you know, that uh, as per the, I don't know if Mike was at that at the conference. There was a guy that got up and said, either you're going to pay or I'm going to leave. Were you there when the guy, that one guy? Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, so, um just take a look, just take a look at it. Um, uh, so I suggest two things is after this meeting, we have a brief ad hoc committee meeting. And second thing we do is schedule a, um, uh, we, we need to ask the chair to schedule a special meeting of the commission so we can uh, have a workshop and possible action at the workshop 
in the, in the very near future, within the next couple of weeks, so we can move on with this. <clears throat> Through the oh. chair. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. That, um, I'm assuming with your guys's, with your inner county, inner city meetings, you, you all could discuss that as well, Steve. Some options to mm. possibly bring before that special session. Um, John, I did notice one thing on item A, Tarabuena Yuba City Subsidiary District. Did you want to cover something on that? I don't really have any comment. I'm thinking I'm going to get an application from the city to dissolve it. This is the district that is in the city limits now. It no longer serves a purpose. So it's just a disillusion. Oh, okay. And um, I think all the other stuff you covered pretty good. Did you want to talk a little more about uh, that was D. Did you? I guess D's covered. Yeah. Uh, uh, through the chair. D. Yeah. Uh, oh. John, now you have in the years you've been working here, you have been working for other LAFCO agencies. Right. Is that correct? And so I assume you're you're retiring from all of them too. Uh, they're um, they're all getting noticed in the next month. Okay. I, so I eventually we'll go out and have a plan somewhat similar to this giving the commission's options. Like well, I know one person that's willing to take over one of them right now. Well, what I was wondering is, is there any one person out there like you uh, to handle these other smaller LAFCOs that are going to not have an executive director? Uh, I, I know of some of people that have done it. I mean, that's an option, isn't it? Yeah, and maybe I should have included that as option get five. one really good, experienced person Find because one to take them all over. Yeah, um, and that that's a that's definitely an option. Um, I'm trying to think of who's not retiring because two of them are retiring. Uh, uh, two of these uh, laugh goes. Um, well, what I mean is that you, right now you're in charge of or. I assume still are is of uh, uh, these different LAFCOs, right? Right. Okay. So they're not going to have a director, correct? They're going to have to go out and find they're another executive. They're going to have to do executive. what you're doing. Pardon? They're going to have to. Yeah, they're going to have to get a director. I'm just thinking we already have this um, set up. These people that these LAFCOs that will not have a director. I don't. Maybe we should be talking to them too. The same ones that he's been. Um, been a member of and as a director, and see if we can't hire one good, you know, experienced director to cover him like he has. Through the chair, yeah, we have an experienced operator working for the city right now, currently. Okay, but I just, I mean, as an option, I think it could be another option. I'm not trying to oh. knock out anyone that you gentlemen have been discussing. Um, Mike brings up that that is an option. You go, you have somebody that's experienced. The only issue I have is he'll have two masters, one that yeah. regulates another, and that's an issue. That's why I thought that it would be prudent. You have some sort of a legal opinion, and what are the what is the par parameters for this person? How is he going to be protected from? Uh, how is he going to be protected? <clears throat> yeah, puts him sure in a very bad position. Out. Do you have? Is yeah, the person yeah. you're thinking of, what's his position in the city? I think we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Um, For open session. You probably, you, I think we probably need to bring this back and close. We have a closed session item number 10. Um, we should session? probably bring that up at that point. Yeah. You can't have a closed session when you're discussing the position, not an individual. But if, you, if you're uh, just deciding whether to hire a specific individual, I, I, we weren't actually deciding to hire anybody. What our plan was to discuss our idea with the board and go over some of these ideas. Yes, that has to be done in open session. Which would be the workshop that's being referenced, correct? Thank you. We, have, we can't do it in a session. Okay. All right. Um, I guess we don't really have a need for a closed session then. Well... Probably not, but we do have a need for a, a meeting in, in the near, very near future, in the next right. few weeks. 
uh, just so that, and it gives you a time to look at that memo and add things to it and, and, and then possibly come up to a decision. Through the chair. Yeah, go ahead. I think it's, I think it's appropriate for us as the three members of the ad hoc committee that did meet um, for a very uh, short meeting to discuss um, potential options should um, John offer a letter of termination because you had signaled that you were and weren't and were and weren't. So there has been an ad hoc meeting. He's got his letter right here. I had to right. fish or cut bait here, and so I'm doing it. I appreciate that, and I'm not, yeah, I'm just saying that we, we had a meeting in anticipation of, of what might happen in regards to you um, following through on your termination. So for the board's point of view, the ad hoc committee has has met and has discussed several options during that should John um, terminate, and he has now signaled to do so, and I think it would be appropriate for us to, sh to share those in the workshop, which is being referenced. And we can talk about those. Right. Um, one of those things that has been examined is the legality of whether it's a county or the city or what have you, and, and um, we can talk about that at the workshop. That was through the ad hoc committee that was appointed by the chair. Right. Okay. Um, so I don't see any need for the closed session today, at least. And probably uh, probably will, if we get to that point down the road, we'll have a contract, and that will have to be brought back for the board in closed session, correct? If you're thinking of hiring a specific individual and discussing right. their, their, their points, yes. That yeah. Yeah. Um, so that that concludes item number nine and ten. Uh, commissioner reports. Excuse me. Can we can we talk dates for a meeting in the near very near future? Can we uh, see yeah. who, what the calendars look like here? I mean, I'm, I'm we have July thirteenth, which is we need to probably have one in between. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Um, what's the pleasure of the group, the board, commission here? It's going to be a really touch and go in the next month, especially with graduations going on. That's true. Through the chair. You know, this is um, not going to be a real easy, I don't think, decision. Um, could we have it within the next two to three weeks? So sooner or better? What I for today is the 18th. Uh, if you want it in the chambers, we'd have to check the availability of the chambers as well. What, Possibly what have it at, maybe at 10 in the morning. Well, we'd have to day. check our Monday. schedules, but maybe earlier in the morning. Yeah, this, it can be, this it can won't, be in the morning. We can't do early. I can't do one next week on the same date and time because I have another meeting in Sacramento. But I could do it in the morning on this Say ten o'clock on the eighteenth. What's the What's everybody else's feeling? Hold on, I'm I'm good with that. Are you good with that? Is that good? Yeah. Everybody good? We We should have council here too. I know that Scott's out of town, but um, perhaps Marsha. When do? We, Would you like me to walk across the way and see if the chambers is available that day? Okay. Thank you. Um. I need to check and see if Marcus is there anyone else that can speak on that? Why don't we just tend until we do it for the 18th? 10 a.m. May. Let's see, hopefully. She, she can, she can yeah. she can do yes. Lake. She can do Lake by Zoom if she has that email. 10 a.m. here. What day is the 18th? The 18th, yes. Thursday. Thursday. The 18th on. Yep, Thursday. Thursday, the 18th at. Okay. At 10 a.m. Okay. Got it in there. Okay. Um, so that that's that one. Okay, what about, uh, is there any commissioner reports? I have none. Oh, through the chair? Yes. This is not really a report, but I, I do want to, since we have city and county here and being LAFCO, the other day, we had an issue down along Garden Highway, the levee, you know, levee district number one. 
Mm -hmm. And um, our place was broken into and about $5,000 worth of lumber was stolen on the backside. And it was from the encampment <laughs> there. Uh, so, you know, we called, we called the city. And the city said, oh, no, that's county jurisdiction. So we called the county. And the county said, no, that's city jurisdiction. And finally, we just went down ourselves. Um, uh, three of my guys did. Um, happened to be my son, my, my grandson, and my son-in-law all went down there. Um, and in the process, where, where our fence line is, um, that is city. Until you get to the toe of, on the outside of the, the levee, and then that becomes county. Well, in between is uh, Levee District 1, and then when you get over the top and down, it's county. So we have three entities. Oh, and then there's state. There's four entities from our fence line to the middle of the river. And nobody wants to take responsibility for that. So my people had to go down there. Um, it was pretty ugly, but they, we did get our, our product back, except our fence was destroyed. This is happening continuously uh, in that whole section. The other companies that are along that guard highway, Epley, Burns, all that, they're having the same problems. But I just thought I'd bring it up here. Somewhere along the line, we've got to come up with a program on what is the procedure and then make sure the different entities follow through. I mean, all together with the fence and everything, it was about 10 grand. And we couldn't even get a report made until we just insisted, insisted, and insisted. Yeah, the, the property where the theft occurred was in the city, but the product got delivered to the county. And Levy District. And the, Well, across the Levy District, but into the county. Mm -hmm. But the theft occurred in the city. Right. Uh, Nobody wants to touch anything yeah. that happens there. Yes. So, I mean, we've had big fires. Uh, mm -hmm. That about a year ago, a very large fire, but it's just an issue the community has to face all the time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Larry, anything? I have nothing. Thank you. Nothing? Mark? I, I think it's um, appropriate for to say thanks to John for his years of service. Years of service, yep. With LAFCO. Um, um, well, I, I, I just know from, from my point of view. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to, to extend um, my appreciation for the time that you have spent. I really do. And Scott as well. And Paige. I, I don't know how that continues or doesn't continue, but at least know from uh, my point of view that, uh, that I appreciate it. And on behalf of the city. Well, through the chair, I just want to say I've worked with John and, and with, uh, with Scott and Paige uh, over on uh, Yuba County um, side, and that goes back quite a few years that I've worked with you, John, <laughs> and how much I appreciate it and appreciate the very difficult work that you do, both of you. It's very nitpicky. Yeah, everything has to be very precise. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So don't, that make, it makes a big difference if you can stay totally independent of everything. But yeah. we have some issues here, so we may have to do something else. But thank you again, John. Thank Chairman, you. I would like to add my comments to John. Uh, the two terms I served as chairman, he was excellent in his helping me. And I appreciate it very much, John. Thank you. Well, I'm not, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> Still got July 11th, okay. right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, you know, we, we so I'd also like to add, if nobody else wants to, thank you, John, for your years of service to the county and the city and LAFCO. And I would like to add one comment that we never quite got done 
and I don't know how we I want don't want this to fall under the bus and not get taken care of, but I believe that we need to add to our bylaws that if there isn't a property ex exchange from city to county or any property jurisdiction uh, where the property changes hands, that notice written notice has to be given to the property owner surrounding it and posted. And I'd like to research that and make that a bylaw resolution down the road. Um, but I don't think you're going to be handling it for it, John. We're, you know, we're supposed to notify everybody, but not the property owners. Right, right but we need to notify owners. the property owners, yeah. Because last time we didn't do that, and we had property owners that were upset because they weren't notified. And I, did, I assumed they were notified because in the county we require it, in the city we require it, but we don't require it for the LAFCO. So, uh, that's a good point. Well, anyway, I was always thinking we'd get there, but I guess not with John. <laughs> so, anyway, but thank you, John, and thank you for your years of service. Uh, there's nothing further to bring before the board commission. Um, meeting is adjourned.